Dzień dobry moi drodzy, witajcie, jestem Grabari, a to jest mój kanał i kolejny materiał. Dzisiaj zabieram Was do kościoła, ponieważ będę przeprowadzał wywiad z Hozierem, autorem hitu Take Me to Church. Czyli taki mega po prostu zabawny rzecz z mojej strony, Take Me to Church, do kościoła, jak wiecie o co chodzi. W każdym razie, no Maxa się jaram, ponieważ nie tylko bardzo, bardzo uwielbiam jego muzykę, bardzo uwielbiam, bardzo mądre zdanie, ale też Hozier jest doskonałym rozmówcą, jeśli chodzi o takie tematy społeczne, trochę polityczne, trochę też związane z LGBT, więc lecę, pędzę, a wy oglądajcie. Do you enjoy touring? Because I feel like for fans it's like the last piece to connect with the, yeah. the artist. Yeah, um, I do very much so enjoy touring. Um, especially like getting on the road and playing new music is a really, really good feeling. And getting to go to places you haven't been before is, is fantastic. Playing playing shows there is a, is a joy, you know. So this is my first time playing a show in Warsaw, for example. So that's really exciting. You know? Being, I've never been to Warsaw either, so um, yeah, very much so. Really do. Are you getting nervous be before playing uh, a new material for the first time? W if it's new material for the first time, yes, yeah. If it's the first time you've ever played that song on stage, of course. And it, you can you can practice it a hundred times, and you can you can do it a thousand times. Um, but there's mistakes that you will only make the first time you play the song. There's mistakes you'll only ever make on stage. And you just have to do that, and it happens. Yeah. Are you actually able to capture the audience reaction during performing when you do a new song? Sometimes. Um, sometimes you're concentrating on what you're doing. But when hearing an audience reaction, so before we released Movement, we played that before it was released, which is the song on, on the album. Um, and yeah, there was really nice reactions to that song night after night, and that's a really encouraging, good feeling, you know? Um, you also meet with your fans. Um, can you tell us like a little glimpse of how those meetings look like? Because they're yeah. sharing stories, telling you something, how music, your music affected them. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. Um, usually it's just, it's just you know, we get to say hey, which is really, really nice. There might be a few people after a show, kind of sign, sign tickets, sign albums if they're there. And then, you know, it's really, it's like a hello and a hug and, and like, thank you very much, you know. And, and sometimes, yeah, people share share stories with you and um which is wonderful also and, and you know uh, I've, I've some of the best fans in the world i have to say so it's, it's always a good thing only last year your songs have been streamed like over a uh, half billion times mm -hmm. um what this kind of success means to you really um i d i know it sounds funny i don't th i don't think about it all that much so like you know sometimes somebody will say yeah it's been streamed x amount of times or you hear this extravagant number of how many times the song has been heard um, it doesn't uh, you, you try not to internalize it uh, you try not to think about it too much you just try to keep keep going because it also I can't really make sense of that number either you know what I mean it's 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 not we're talking about thousands of millions so it's just like it's too it's too much it's too much are you a fan of streaming yourself or you do old school yeah I, I do I do both so I have um I have a system at home, I have a hi-fi system at home, but um, I'm never there, so I never get to listen to, to music at home in a, in a proper setting uh, on, on physical vinyls, let's say. Um, so I stream a lot, yeah, I do. Yeah. It seems like you, are, you have like a soft spot for pop hits because you did some amazing covers of uh, Ariana, Demi Lovato songs. Mm -hmm. um, what is so appealing about them that you keep doing those covers? Um, there's an immediacy to, to a lot of pop songs. There's a kind of a, there's an immediate grabbing of a pop song. So like when you hear something like uh, Sorry Not Sorry by Demi Lovato uh, or Problems by Ariana Grande, there is a, there's a, there's a quick, there's a quick grabbing and, and a, a, a quick sort of uh, um, excitement to, to, to a great pop song. And, and even when it's, when it's lyrical themes are simplistic, that, you know, that offers scope and when the court when the when the harmony is is simplistic it offers scope to kind of play play with and and, and look at from different angles so it, yeah they're also just great great songs uh, over the years you've got a really good taste of what um, a mainstream artist can do like performing on snl uh, victoria's secret show uh, late night shows in the usa um, and i wonder do you consider yourself as a mainstream artist or someone who is like just doing your thing yeah i think I think I kind of fell in between, so I'm not. I'm not sure. 
because I had this very un, I had this kind of unlikely hit with Take Me to Church, which became this this mainstream hit. Um, but I never considered that I would be terribly mainstream. Um, and I, I I don't write I don't, I don't write with the intention to sit in the mainstream or in the, in the kind of top ten either. Um, so I think I've just been very very fortunate. I've been an artist who's just done this thing, and then was incredibly lucky, incredibly fortunate that some of that found its way into the mainstream, and, and that's that offered so many opportunities. And you know, yeah. you're very active on social media, but unlike uh, many other artists, you don't share a lot of your uh, private life. Mm -hmm. Why is that? I think I think it's just because there's enough there's an, there's enough of me anyway in, 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 that 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 is in the public eye, you know. So. Um, Photos go up. I do shows every day, so people people know where I am in the world. People know what I'm what I'm up to, without me having to tell them, you know. And um, I think I think yeah. Also, people don't need to know what I'm what I'm up to all the time. I think it, it, they'd be quite bored. They'd be they'd be very unimpressed with what I get up to half the time. So, so. Um, in your songs, you talk a lot about um, social issues. Is it important for you to use your voice that way? Um. I feel it's I feel it's I feel it's important to well for me anyway personally uh, I feel it's important to try and make yourself useful at times and if and if you ha if there's if there's something that you can give a signal boost to or you can you can um, something that 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 you feel strongly about or something that you feel is right um, and you can you can offer it a platform or you can you can send people its direction um, then why not why not do it you know. Um, But for me, for the music, it's more so that I just I hope to hope to just tell the truth as I see it, or just just be honest in the work as, as best I possibly can. So yeah. Are people coming to you and saying like thank you for standing up? Um, sometimes, yeah, sometimes. Which um, I think is is I can only say it, it's like at the end of the day, I'm not I'm not doing I'm not doing all that, all that much. It's not really um, I make noises for a living, you know. So, um, so, so ultimately, is sometimes yeah, and, and it's wonderful if if the work means means something to to somebody. You know, it's great. So, do you think that music or those noises, as you said, uh, can make a difference in the world? Um, I, th I think the I think the best difference music makes is is that it 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 it, it uh, when you, when you hear a song and the right song at the right time, um, it, it it can it can help somebody feel less alone and I think that's that's a wonderful thing that a, that a song could do and if that's all that a song does um, that's still a win you know but I think you know you are sharing when you're sharing some, an element of your experience your human experience um, with somebody and if somebody can find themselves in that song find their own experience in that or find some something in it um, th that's a wonderful thing you're, you're kind of connecting you're connecting albeit from a very different part of the world um, so yeah that's I don't know if it, I don't know what else it could do outside of that, but at least it can do that. Yeah. You're very outspoken about LGBTQ issues. Mm -hmm. um, don't you think it's quite absurd that we still in 2019 have to like fight for such basic rights? Yeah, there's there's one there's one point of view that would say that it is absurd, um, and then at the same time it's also just just terribly important. Um, you could say it's absurd, but nothing's guaranteed, and it seems like these things are, are rolling backwards, you know, um, in a lot of ways. Um, certainly in, in, in what were kind of bastions of kind of so, so socially liberal policies, like in, in America, uh, the rhetoric has gone, gone very much the other way. You've got, you've got a vice principal who, who, um, who's been supportive of things like c conversion therapy, etc. Um, and, you know, that, that, that kind of a kind of a that kind of outlook that kind of elements of of, of the bigotry that that informs that uh, that outlook that crosses borders and so yeah I, th I think things have been rolling back so although it's at the same time it feels yeah it's absurd uh, it's also more important now than ever you know sadly there you go uh, speaking of america uh like two weeks ago uh in one of the cities they did uh, a straight Pride, straight parade. Um, mm -hmm. What's your mm -hmm. thoughts on it? I think it's, I, um, I think it's really, really terrible. To be honest, I don't think it's a joke. I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, um, 
uh, now I have to I have to look into it more. I, I believe it was reported that some of the organisers of that were in, were affiliated with some very very kind of ultra ultra uh, ultra hard right uh, um, coalitions. But um, I I think it's I think it's more nefarious than people. You know what I mean? I, I don't think it's um, I think it's I think it's kind of um, I I don't know how to best best put it, but it's it's uh, it's, yeah I think it's. I think it, it would be it would be kind to call that bullshit. To be honest, to call it, uh, uh, um, I think it's I think it's it's quite toxic. To be honest, I, I think it, at the core of it, it is. Just, um, yeah. Anyway, I read somewhere that your favorite novel is uh, Ninety Eighty Four yeah. uh, by George Orwell. Yeah. Um, do you share the sentiment that everything that is happening right now in the world kind of um, is mirroring what we could read in a book? Sometimes it's kind of scary, yeah. Um, so he sort of predicted, I'd say, like a, a state, a super state, uh, a super, you know, a, a superpower that that watches every everything that that is that pe- people does. We've kind of arrived, we've kind of arrived at that, albeit through through kind of the private sector, I suppose, more so, and kind of, uh, um, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of spooky, yeah, yeah. We're all, yeah, when you, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Getting back to uh, to the tour, uh, are you writing new songs during the tour, and is there any chance we get to like hear uh, some new material along the way? Um, the yeah, so I'm writing some new songs at the moment, and um, hope hopefully I can release them before the end of this year. So whether they form part of the album, the next album, I'm not sure. Whether they just exist on their own, that would be wonderful, also. So. Ultimately, I just, I just, because I've been on the road for quite a while, I just, I just want to feel like I'm, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still making, making work, you know. Yeah. yeah so for the end, uh, is there anything you want to say to your Polish fans? Yeah. Um, if I was to say anything to, to Polish fans, which is thank you, thank you so, so much for your support, and it's amazing to finally be in Warsaw. It's amazing to finally play a proper show here. We played a festival a few years ago. It was one of the best crowds I've ever played to in my life. So. Um, I'm really looking forward to this and, and thank you for everything up, up, up till this point. You know. Ja właśnie wróciłem z wywiadu z Hozierem, jestem w domu. Fantastyczny rozmówca, bardzo spokojny, wyważony. Nie powiedziałbym, że cedzący słowa, ale myślący o tym, co chcę powiedzieć. A mówi bardzo mądrze, więc taki system się opłaca i bardzo wysoki. Jak stanęliśmy do takiej pamiątkowej fotki po wywiadzie, to wyglądało to dość komicznie, bo Hozier ma prawie 2 metry. Ja nie uznaję się za niską osobę, mam 1,83 m, powiedzmy, jak podniosę grzywkę wysoko, tak jak dzisiaj. A i tak czułem się przy nim bardzo, bardzo malutki. Jeszcze dzisiaj wieczorem czeka mnie jego koncert, nie mogę się doczekać, ponieważ no, to jest fantastyczny muzyk, świetny wokalista, super człowiek, także mega dobry zestaw. Piszcie, co myślicie o naszym wywiadzie, czy podzielacie poglądy Hoziera, które myślę, że no, powinny dobrze rezonować z osobami, które cenią sobie wolność, równość, tolerancję. Więc dawajcie znać w komentarzach. Mam nadzieję, że takich smaczków, wywiadów z zagranicznymi gwiazdami będzie więcej na moim kanale. Staram się jak mogę, każda okazja, która jest, staram się ją wykorzystywać, więc mam nadzieję, że to doceniacie. Tyle ode mnie na dziś. Do zobaczenia w kolejnych materiałach. Na razie.